one of the most shocking war criminals of the Second World War, was Joachim Piper, an SS member who was responsible for a huge amount of war crimes, including the slaughter of American prisoners of war. He would serve Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, as an assistant, and he witnessed much of the slaughter and execution that had occurred inside of the concentration camps. But Piper was also a feared tank commander who served on the Eastern and Western Front, and his soldiers of Kampfgruppe Piper became infamous for their involvement in war crimes against civilians. But at the end of the Second World War, he was brought to trial, and was then accused of war crimes and was sentenced to death. But despite this, he would have his death sentence commuted to time imprisonment, because of how he was treated by Americans during the interrogation and imprisonment. Because of this, he escaped what he should have had coming to him, and he lived for decades inside a country where he committed many crimes, France. However, when his location was discovered in the 1970s, Joachim Piper would be slaughtered inside his own home in a reprisal for his actions decades after World War II had ended. Join us today as we look at the death of Joachim Piper, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Joachim Piper was born in Berlin on the 30th of January 1915, and was from a rather middle-class family. His father was a soldier in the German army, and his father also took part in the Freikorps movement, and was angry at the fact Germany had lost World War I. At the age of 11, he became a Boy Scout, and through this he was interested in pursuing a career in the military. Joachim's older brother joined the SS, and later became a guard inside a concentration camp, seeing action also in Poland where he was killed. But at the age of 18, Joachim Piper joined the Hitler Youth. He volunteered for the SS and then joined the Cavalry SS, and he was promoted a number of times. His reputation caught the attention of Heinrich Himmler, and to Himmler, Piper was an ideal Aryan, and someone who personified the master race, promoted by the Nazis. He was sent on a military leadership course, and received positive reviews from his instructors. However, psychologists noted he had a negative attitude, and wished to impress others with his personal relationship to Himmler. He continued to serve inside of the SS, training to be an officer, and whilst at school, he was also taught the Nazi anti-Semitic values they promoted to devastating effect. He served a tour of duty with a tank division, and Himmler saw him as a promising SS leader. Piper then served as a staff officer inside of the anteroom of the SS main office in Berlin, and his friendship with Himmler flourished, and he was considered a favourite assistant. Piper was always present where Himmler was, in official capacities. When the Nazis invaded Poland in September 1939, Piper travelled on the personal train of Himmler, and he was also party to meetings with Hitler, when the Fuhrer travelled with Rommel and other Wehrmacht and SS generals. Piper personally saw the brutal executions and savagery of the German officers, who carried out mass executions of the Polish people, and he was noted to have been a witness to these also. He also saw the Action T4 poison gas killings of disabled and mentally ill people inside of psychiatric hospitals. Together with Himmler, Piper travelled and conducted many inspections of concentration camps within Nazi Germany, and he was involved in arranging the deportations of Jews from many cities including Warsaw. As they continued the concentration camp tours, they witnessed more execution. As Germany invaded France, Piper became a platoon leader of a tank division, and he was awarded the Iron Cross Second Class, and later the Iron Cross First Class, and he was very skilled. He was then told of the impending operation involving the Soviet Union, and he had four months to prepare Waffen SS soldiers in what was called Kampfgruppe Piper for a conflict with the Red Army. He remained with Himmler to travel to occupied lands, observing ghettos which were set up during the occupations of Poland, and he also saw the brutality of German soldiers. Piper was definitely present in June 1941 for a conference in which Himmler debated the plans for slaughtering 30 million Slavs in Europe and Russia, and when the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union occurred, Piper was there to inspect the work of the Einsatzgruppen, who were executing thousands of civilians by gunshot. He continued to fight on the Eastern Front, and Piper wrote of close combat fighting with the Soviets, and he became known for war crimes. Upon entering a village on the Eastern Front, Piper and his soldiers discovered 25 Germans killed by partisans and Soviets, and for this he then ordered the burning down of the whole village, and for all the inhabitants and civilians to be shot dead. His unit was known as a blowtorch battalion, 
for their slaughter of two Soviet villages, where all the inhabitants were shot and killed, and the villages then burned. Hundreds were killed in Piper's actions, and it was stated he himself was eager to execute the order to burn the villages. His group were known for terror, and he was proud of this. Yerkin Piper became used as a propaganda hero for his leadership inside the Waffen SS, and he also was used in Italy, with Kampfgruppe Piper fighting. But on the 19th of September 1943, partisan guerrillas of the Italian resistance movement killed a soldier, and captured too close to Berbez in northwestern Italy. During a firefight with partisans, the Germans failed to rescue the men, and following this, Kampfgruppe Piper were in control of the roads in and out of the village, and Piper ordered the partisans that he would destroy the village if they did not release the SS men. The local priest would negotiate the release of the prisoners, and the body of the SS soldier killed earlier was given back, but Piper, despite getting his wish, then ordered his men to kill 24 men in the village, and they also killed a woman, and burned and looted her house in the process. Piper's combat experience continued during the Battle of Normandy, and he had been withdrawn following a short stint on the Eastern Front, and was sent to Belgium. He continued to train new recruits, and the difficult training for Kampfgruppe Piper would even result in five of his men being shot dead for not being good enough. Following Operation Overlord, he was based around Pass de Calais, but was not really used on the front lines, and he did suffer a nervous breakdown and was relieved from command on the 2nd of August 1944, and he went into hospital for treatment. He would go back to the front lines for the Battle of the Bulge and a counter-offensive that saw the American army dig in against the Germans. He continued to command Kampfgruppe Piper, which was the best equipped battle group with the huge Tiger II tanks. Piper tried to capture bridges over the rivers, but Piper during this operation was noted for being involved in a number of massacres. He and his soldiers were responsible for the Malmedy massacre, and his armoured units were confronted by a lightly armed convoy of American vehicles at the Baroness crossroads, and these men surrendered to the Germans but the American soldiers had been gathered in a field near to the crossroads, and Piper, who was outraged by the delay caused by the skirmish and the arrest of the prisoners, ordered his men to execute and massacre 84 American soldiers, and their corpses were left in the snow for weeks for the American army to find. More slaughter came in other Belgian towns and cities and villages, and eventually Kampfrupa Piper were cut off. Piper and his men then abandoned their vehicles and retreated, but at the end of the war, Yerkin Piper was actually sentenced to death for his involvement in the Malmedy Massacre and other atrocities conducted by his unit under his command. At his trial, he complained he had been tortured for information and for a confession, and that his confession had been obtained through inappropriate interrogation. Because of this, Piper's death sentence, which would have seen him being hanged, was then commuted to time imprisonment, and over the next decade, all of those imprisoned in the trial had been freed from their time in prison. Piper's death sentence initially was commuted to 35 years imprisonment, expecting to spend the rest of his life in prison, but then this was commuted further, and he was actually released in December 1956 from Landsberg Prison, a mere decade after the war had come to an end. But by 1956, he was a very bitter man, who had personally had his most high-profile days behind him, and he had been friends with Hitler and Himmler, but now he was no one. He went to work for Volkswagen in a dealership in sales and stated in an interview, I was a Nazi and I remain one. The Germany of today is no longer a great nation. It has become a province of Europe. That is why at the first opportunity I shall settle elsewhere, in France no doubt. I don't care for the Frenchman, but I love France. Further court proceedings against him emerged in 1968 and Piper was accused of killing Italian civilians. But the court ruled there was insufficient evidence and no formal charges went ahead. During the winter of 1970, Piper, now around 55, had moved to a small house he and his wife built in Traves. The French authorities granted him permission to live there, and they knew who he was and what his background was, but he was allowed to settle. The family were not particularly well off, but his children were grown up. Piper and his wife also lived very comfortably. They had a rather decent amount of land too, and they wanted to live quietly and not attract any attention. Piper did secure his land though with barbed wire fences. Despite the Pipers living a quiet life and keeping themselves to themselves, they did have some friends inside of the village, but then a campaign was launched in June 1917. But then a hate campaign was launched in June 1976. On the 21st of June, 
Leaflets were distributed throughout Traves, saying, People of Traves, a war criminal, SS Piper is amongst us. Then people began to talk about the need to expel him from France. This was even talked about in national newspapers. There was a lot of outrage that the man who had inflicted such massacre and suffering was allowed to settle freely in one of the countries where he committed his crimes. And within a few days, all of the national and international media were running stories about Piper and the walls and road surfaces in his area was decorated with swastikas, SS runes and Piper's name. Jurkin Piper did complain to the police and they said they would guard his property during the day but not at night and the West German embassy in Paris advised him to leave. But he conducted an interview with a newspaper two days after the leaflets were distributed and said when asked about his past as a Nazi, this is a ridiculous question. I was young and idealistic against Bolshevism. I do not understand why people keep dragging up history. As the Italians say, coffee is cold. It's time for reconciliation in Europe. I was not political. I was never a member of the Nazi party. I was a soldier. In July, further threats against Piper's life and his property were made, and he was sent letters and was subject to telephone calls saying his house would be burned down and his dogs slaughtered. There was no threat to kill him specifically, but during this time his wife left for her own safety. Piper felt like his house had become an entrenched camp and things became rather tense and he was not as worried as he did not believe those making threats would ever carry out anything substantial but he was armed with a Colt 38 revolver and a 22 calibre rifle to defend himself. He was even given a shotgun to further bolster his arsenal and these were always loaded. On Bastille Day, the 14th of July 1976, the attack upon Piper's house came. In the early hours, sirens were heard and flames were coming from his house. The local fire brigade arrived and found their pump was not working, which slowed down efforts to extinguish the fire, and when it was eventually put out, the charred remains of a body were found in the study. These were the remains of Jurkin Piper, and they'd shrunk to around 60 centimetres due to how intense the fire was, and it was said they were barely recognisable as to belonging to a human. His identity was confirmed, and under the body, the police found a fire damaged revolver with a case in the chamber and nearby was a revolver with five rounds that had been fired from the cylinder. A further 13 unfired rounds were found from the rifle and on the terrace they found three shotgun cartridges from the one given to him that had been fired and had a strong smell of powder. By looking in the garden there were traces of shot near an oak tree around 10 metres from the house and it's believed that Piper tried to shoot those who had attacked his house. Forensics confirmed a number of things. The Yerkin Piper had tried to save some clothes belonging to his wife by throwing them out of the house and onto the veranda, and Piper's watch was also found on his body. This had stopped at 1am, with the clock in the house stopping seven minutes later. It was said that the fire had begun at the back of the house near the road and had taken hold very quickly. It was started by Molotov cocktails, and the remains of one was found nearby outside the house, and Piper's house had been firebombed. It was also found that the fence between the garden and the meadow had been cut with wire cutters and that from this Piper had spotted the attackers and shot at them. He shot all three weapons at the people and there was no evidence of other weapons being fired towards the house. It's believed that Jurkin Piper shot his shotgun from the terrace to put off the attackers and as the fire engulfed his house he then entered the house again to save some important papers and further clothes of his wife. He then tried to defend himself by firing the weapons but was then overcome by the smoke and he collapsed dying inside the fire. Following the death of Jurkin Piper, an anti-Nazi group named the Avengers emerged reporting to the London Times that they were the ones responsible and Piper's charred house would become a brief tourist attraction with many people coming to see a glimpse of the burned out house of the former SS officer. Jurkin Piper was a shocking and brutal SS leader and he would be responsible for the deaths of thousands of people. He rubbed shoulders with the leadership of the SS and was very close friends with Heinrich Himmler. But 30 years after the war had ended, his death occurred, and many people have considered that Piper unfairly escaped execution for his crimes, and if he had not have been treated poorly in his captivity or tortured, then he would have definitely gone to the gallows for his crimes. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.